The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Now, whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my patients. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie, come quickly. Confound it, Parker. Why are you all in a flutter? It's police captain Daggett. He, he's in emergency. He's been shot. Shot? Come on, Dr. Gillespie. When did it happen? Well, they just brought him in. He's in here. Hi, Doc. Hi, Daggett. A little job for you. So we heard. You better lie back. Uh, uh, bullet in the fleshy portion of the thigh. Yeah. Now, how'd you get this? Trouble at the Midtown School. I gotta get back there. You get this at the school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Madman's got himself barricaded in there with a gun. You know, that new kindergarten playhouse in the middle of the courtyard? Oh. Oh, there any children in there? Doc, we don't know. I tried to get into him, and I got this... Whole precinct is there. We better get back there with you. Parker, go get Kildare a probe. Well, what started this, Daggett? How did it happen? Oh, who knows? It was just after three o'clock when he got in there. That's why we don't know whether or not any kids are with him. Any idea who the man is? No, except that his name is Kozlov. He's been doing some house painting in the neighborhood. Kozlov? Peter Kozlov? Yeah. Oh, isn't yeah. that the fellow that fell off the scaffold and broke his leg in the hospital when it was being painted, Jimmy? Right, right. I, I took care of him. He seemed a quiet, harmless sort. Well, this hole in my leg doesn't agree with that, Doc. <laughs> I don't wonder. That man must be a homicidal paranoia. Couldn't you detect any trace of it, Jimmy? No, it wasn't manifest at that time. Ah, oh, there's too much open ground around that building. And I can't use my rifleman for sniping until I know he's alone in there. No, 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 but you can't hold back long enough to find out either. Mm. If he's holding any children in there, they won't be safe long. Parker, Parker, uh, get my bag from the car. Yes, Doctor. Uh, Jimmy, what kind of a scatterbrained scheme are you cooking up? I'm going in there. Now, oh, wait a minute, Doc. I'm not going to raise you responsible for you getting yourself shot. I can't let you do it. Neither can you risk the possibility of leaving children in there with him. Get the bag, Dr. Kildare. Thanks. Well, Daggett, Kildare's right. We'll try it together. Oh, no, Dr. Gillespie. Just one man. Kozlov knows me. Oh, but Conrad, I helped Jimmy... him when he was hurt. It may make him hesitate about harming me. Oh, it's a big gamble, Doc. And you'll have to take it every step for a hundred feet until you reach the plane. I can't just stand here until we find out if all the children from school reached home. No, but you expect me to sit here calmly while now, you... Now, there's no choice, Dr. You... Gillespie. Somebody has to take a chance on getting into that playhouse. Now, you keep your men where they are, Daggett, no matter what happens. Okay. I I'm against this, but, well, I've got to let you try it because I can't think of any other way. Just remember that that lunatic put a bullet in Jimmy, be careful. Oh, sure. You ought to be more careful with that gun, Pete. You almost hit me. You stay there, Doctor. Don't you come any closer. I'm 
must come in there, Pete. I tell you, go away. I have no gun, Pete. I just want to test the drinking fountain to make sure the water's all right. You're lying to me, doctor. No, Pete. The children have been complaining about the water. There may be something wrong with it. You'll want some yourself if you stay in there. You can't come in here. Sorry, Pete, but I must come in. You have no right to stop me, Pete. I'm a doctor. Jimmy, good boy. He made it, Doc. He made it. Well, he got in alive, if that's what you mean. But getting out alive may be a different proposition. Unless we can give him some help. Oh, well, what can I do? I need one of your men. Have him go to Kozlov's home and see if he has a wife or a relative of your, your, or even a friend who might have some influence with him. Okay, you gonna wait here? Wait for what? For Kilgare to get shot? I gotta get back to the hospital. Well, what can you do there? Look up Kozlov's hospital record and try to diagnose a mental illness by reading reports about a broken leg. I'm watching you, doctor. Don't try nothing. Don't play no tricks on me. I'm just getting a glass of water, Pete. You're not going to shoot me for that, are you? I got to shoot you, Doctor. After a while, I got to shoot you. Well, you wouldn't hurt me, Pete. We're friends. No, I have no friends. You don't fool me, Doctor. Well, water seems to be all right. I better test it thoroughly, though. No, don't touch the bed, Doctor. Now, Pete, you know what's in there. Instruments, chemicals, medicine, that's all. You might have gun in there. All right could have, but I haven't. Open it yourself. Here, I'll, I'll hold your gun for you. You think I'm crazy? That's a bad word, Pete. You're just sick. You think I give you this gun? You want to get it away from me? Open back yourself. I watch you. All right, Pete. Now, you, uh, want to hold this glass of water for me? Put that on plate, table. All right. Now, watch. I just pour some of this into the water, and if the water isn't pure, it will change color. See, Pete? No change. Well, water's all right after all. What you put in there? Oh, just a simple chemical. You put in poison. That's ridiculous, Pete. You taste it. Put poison in there? You try to fool me, doctor, but I know. I know all about everything. I know what you... <laughs> it's only the telephone, Pete. I'll answer it. No, no, no. Them, they're out there. They sent you in to trick me. I wanted to come in, Pete, to be on your side. Maybe I can find out what they intend to do out there. You can come over and stand right beside me. Near window? You won't get me near window. No, no, and you can stand right where you are then. I can't get away. All right. Tell them go away. Tell them go away or I kill you. Hello? Kill there, Captain Baggett. Just get him under control. Not yet. Where are you calling from? We tapped the phone line. Right out in the street. You let your answer, huh? With difficulty. Any kids in there? Haven't seen any. But there's a wardrobe closet. He got a gun on you? Yes. Isn't there any way you can get the best of him? I tried to uh, administer sedative. Talk louder, doctor. That him? Yes. He wouldn't take it? Huh? Nope. Well, I tried to find out if there are any kids in that closet, will you? I'll do my best. That's enough, Doctor. I don't like what you say. I have to say goodbye now, Daggett. But, Doc, uh, can't Hold on you on do Your friends think they're going to come help you, huh? Nobody's coming, Pete. Oh, yes, they are, Doctor. We sit down and wait for them. Soon they will come. And when they do, you watch out, Doctor. Watch out! <laughs> So it's liable to be converging on this hospital as a result of my calling you. Now, where's the hospital record on that painter, Pete Kozlov? I told you to get it half an hour ago. It's been right there on 
your desk for the past 29 minutes. Oh, why didn't you tell me when you brought it in? Because you were in the other office talking to that detective the captain sent to Kozlov. Uh. What did he tell you? Why, would you like to hear it again? Huh? You were snooping outside the door listening. I was not listening. Uh. I just happened to overhear a few words. The man was an immigrant born in Poland, that's all. That's all there was to hear. The man doesn't even have a friend. Kildare said he seemed like a nice, quiet sort. Look at these records of ours. They don't tell us any more about Kozlov than the police did. Well, after all, Doctor, the man only had a broken leg. Parker, I don't care what he had. I'm only interested in what he's got now. Tell the switchboard operator to get me the Department of Immigration in Washington. Washington? Washington, D.C.? Yeah, Washington, D.C. Unless you'd rather get me George Washington. Well, I just asked. Well, you've just been told. Now go. The clock in the insurance tower, Pete. Six o'clock. Time for children to be sitting down to dinner. Why you always talk about children? Well, because I'm fond of them. I've seen them playing around here in the daytime. Are there any children here now, Pete? You see any? No, not here, but... Why won't you let me open the wardrobe closet? I don't want you open it. Is there a child in there, Pete? No. You have the gun. Couldn't do any harm to tell me. There is somebody in there, isn't there, Pete? What? You want to get boy away from me, don't you? What you want, I kill you first. What boy are you talking about, Pete? I... No boy. I don't say nothing about boy, I don't. Pete, if there is a child in there, why are you keeping him? Why is he so quiet? You know why, doctor. You never get him, doctor. You too late this time. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. It's 8 o'clock, Pete. It's dark in here. Can't we turn on the lights? Turn on the lights? So they can see us better from out there and we can see them? No, doctor. No lights. Now, sooner or later, you know that... Well, they're calling from outside now. Maybe they're tired of waiting. Maybe they'll tell me they're going away. They won't go away. Well, let me answer it and find out. The moon is bright, Doctor. I can see you. I know, Pete. Hello? Hey, you still all right, Doc? Yes. There's no report of any missing kids yet. You find out if he's holding any. I'm afraid so. But I haven't heard a sound. You mean he has got a kid in the wardrobe closet? Is the kid alive? I said there was no sound. Don't know if he's alive. Watch but... what you say, Doctor. Is Kozlov close enough to hear me? No. Nope. Can you get a light on in there? No, I tried. Uh, may I speak to Dr. Gillespie for a moment? I'm sorry, Doc, but he isn't here. He left hours ago. Oh, I see. I'd better hang up now. Yeah. Goodbye, Doc. Try to hold up. I'll try. They're going to go away, Doctor? Yeah, yes. Yes, Pete, they're going away. I don't hear you tell them go away, Doctor. You don't tell them go away like you say. I forgot, Pete. I warn you what will happen. I warn you. (laughs) 
I've already checked with Washington and London, but I must be certain. Call me if you can reach the ambassador. I- I'm at Blair Hospital, New York City. Goodbye. Dr. Gillespie, I just come down the hall. I and know I... you came down the hall or you wouldn't be here, Parker. There's no other way to get here. Now get to the point. It's Dr. Carew. I saw him. Oh, he's foaming. He's seething. Well, he's... tell him to go and sit on Mount Vesuvius and it'll never be noticed. How about that call I placed to AMG headquarters in Berlin? All right, doctor, all right. Yeah. Can't do anything around here without... Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie. Well, this makes my day perfect. Now, what's on your mind, Carew? What's on my mind? What can possibly be on yours? Phone calls, long distance calls. More than a hundred dollars worth. All I can tell you is don't let your blood pressure go up with the amount. It's liable to hit a thousand. A thousand? But, Dr. Gillespie, you talked to Washington for hours. And then England. And next Germany. I can't get away for a vacation, so I'm taking a trip around the world by phone. Dr. Gillespie. For your information, Dr. Carew, Kildare's in a school building with a homicidal maniac. And if he's ever going to get out of there, we need information. But how will I explain the expense of these overseas calls? I'm responsible, Dr. Gillespie. I have to answer to the board. After all, we conduct the exchange of medical information with hospitals all over the world by mail. Confounded, Carew! Do you think that paranoia in there with Kildare is going to become his roommate while we write overseas? I only know what my responsibility is, Dr. Gillespie, and I can't see the... Dr. You... Carew! I'm trying to do several years of psychiatry on a man I've never seen. And it all has to be done by telephone in a matter of hours. And if I'm wrong, Kildare is as good as dead. Are you going to stand there and rage about the phone bill? Well, I... You're... Oh. Your Berlin party is on the line, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, Berlin? Who are you calling in Berlin? Adolf Hitler. Hmm? Now get out of here. He doesn't want anybody to know he's still alive. Oh, ah, so good. You're getting sleepy, Pete. Huh? Why don't you lie down for a while? Why, you don't go to sleep, Doctor. Well, you're the one who's tired, Pete. Yeah, but I can't stay awake no more than... Then you kill me and open closet. No, doctor, you're not going to fool me. You're not going to get boy away from me. Tomorrow when other children come back, I keep them all here too. You never see them again. I... Telephone, Pete. No. I talk to them, doctor. This time I talk. Hello? You get to the kid yet, Kilder? No, no, I don't get it. So, doctor... Your friends out there, they send you get boy, huh? Pete, they only want to I know, know what, what they want, doctor. Next time, phone ring. That when I kill you. Well, if I don't answer it next time, they'll know something's happened to me, Pete. Why, you know you, you need time. You have to find a way to get out of here. Time to get away. I need time. Yes, and you'll have to let me answer. No. You'll have to, Pete. No. If you don't, they'll come for the boy. You won't be able to stop them. I stopped them. I stop you, too. Is he still all right, Daggett? Oh, Doc, I don't know. Well, I got something that may help him. You, you still got that phone tap? Yes, but... Kozlov answered the last time. Something's wrong. I'm going to have to let my men move in soon. You do, and that man in there will kill Jimmy. Let me try calling. Okay, doctor. Uh, hello, Captain Daggett again, operator. Ring that line you've been holding for me. All right, doctor, it's ringing here. Why doesn't kill their answer? No, oh, doc, I'm afraid we're going to have to move wait, in wait. on Wait, 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 wait. Hello. Jimmy, you all right? Going to phrase, I'm doing as well as can be expected. You let your answer, though. Yeah. It's the last time, I'm afraid. I need any help I can get. Quick. You mean? I can give you the keys to a tortured mind. 
Be careful now how you go about using them. I understand. Kozlov was a displaced person in Europe. Uh-huh. He'd been in a concentration camp. Oh, so that's it. Uh, he had a bad time, Jimmy. His hometown suffered cruelly during the war. The thing that'll help you most isn't pleasant. Yeah. It concerns a school. That's what I need. Go ahead. The invaders took the children out of school and sent them away as a reprisal for resistance. Mm-hmm. Kozlov had a son in that school, Jimmy. Uh, then I don't think there's really a child in here. No, neither do I, Jimmy. He's recreated his son in his imagination. And he's trying to protect him from imaginary enemies. Thank you, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Now, that's a very sick man. Yeah, I know. Go carefully with him. Once you start prying into his mind, that's when he'll be liable most to kill you. Sit down, Pete. I want to talk to you. I give you too much time, Doctor. But you lied to me. You don't send them away. Listen. It's ten o'clock. So it is, Pete. My bedtime and yours. Bedtime of most good people. I'll give you one more hour to pray, Doctor. One more hour till clock strike eleven. Then I kill you. That's too bad, Pete, because... Because I like the sound of that clock. I've listened to it nights at the hospital. Even when I was a kid, I listened to one just like it. The village clock in my hometown. Shut up. You know, every town should have a clock like that. Even a big city like this one. It's a peaceful sound. Most towns all over the world used to have them. But, of course, some of them have been destroyed. My home... My home was clock like that. Uh Uh-huh. A bell in the church. Another one in... 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 In the schoolhouse, Pete? Don't don't talk to me anymore. I don't want to listen. We must talk, Pete. About your son. You know about him, huh? You know about my son. Pete, Pete... You think your son is in the wardrobe closet, don't you? I wish he was. But he isn't. I'll show you. Look. No. Look, Pete. You've got to face the present. No, close, close that door. Close it, I'll shoot. Pete, listen carefully, because I'm your friend. You're sick. You've been sick for a long time in your mind. All the horrible things you had to bury are coming out now. The past and the present are all mixed up. You know you're in America, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, I come here to America. I... And you know why you came, don't you? Because it's a safe place, Pete. A peaceful place. A strong place. And just think, Pete. Do you know anything bad about it? Have you ever heard anything bad about it? I, I, don't, I don't know. You're asking... Too many questions. You know it's wrong to kill a man, don't you, Pete? I don't want you make me. You and those out there waiting. You don't have to protect your child, Pete. Huh? He's in good hands where no human can ever harm him. You you mean with God? Yes. And you believe that. That's why you didn't kill me. Because if you were going to kill me, you'd have done it before. While I was walking up to get into this building. You can't kill anybody, Pete. Because you're a good man. I... My son. Doctor, my... He was only... Seven years old. Give me that gun, Pete. I'm going to take you someplace where we can make you well. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Kildare, are you sure it's safe to keep Kozloff here overnight? Oh, perfectly safe. He's had a sedative. Sleep will help him. In the morning, I'll take him to the state hospital where he can get proper treatment. Well, that man will get well, Daggett. And when he does, he'll come back and live a good, normal life like any other decent citizen. You sound pretty sure of that, Doc. I am sure. Because, as Jimmy proved to us, Pete Kozloff is a good man at heart. And even his worst hallucinations couldn't make him be anything else. Listen. Listen to that. <laughs> it's only the big clock striking midnight. I know, but it's such a wonderful sound. <laughs> Jimmy, it's strange you'd think you'd never heard it before. Perhaps I never have, Dr. Gillespie. Never as clearly as I hear it tonight. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Joel Murcott and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Ted DeCorsia, and Larry Dobkin. Dick Joy speaking.